Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be covering a fictional project where we get to use all of the things we've learned in the previous videos, or at least many of them. So we're going to create some handlers, we're going to use variables, we're going to use lists, we're going to use all kinds of things. Um, I'm going to first start by creating my on-run handler and then we'll use some commenting areas here where we're going to eventually put some other handlers that we'll write as we run through the script. So I'm going to add a try statement and then we're going to, within our on error handler, we will create a special display error handler of our own that we'll use in all of the other handlers we're going to build. So I'm going to write that here and then we'll go ahead and move into writing the actual display error handler. So I'm going to write all of my handlers in a separate screen just for keeping it clean and then eventually I'll copy and paste them all together. So here I'll start with the display error and we'll give it an error title and an error message. And then I'll go ahead and do a display notification error message with title, error title. And then I'll go ahead and end this uh, particular handler. Now we can build out these handlers in different ways and, and add more detail later if we want, but I'm going to start with that for the uh, display error handler. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to ask the user to select an input folder. So I'm going to say set input folder to choose folder with prompt. Please select the folder to process. This will allow them to select a folder of files that we want to um, add into our numbers spreadsheet. Then I'm going to say set file list to my files of folder. So that's going to be a new handler I'm going to write. And we're going to send in the input folder and a wildcard. So let's focus on this handler. We're going to start writing on files of folder. And again, we're going to receive an input folder. So I'm going to write that. And then we're going to do a search option. That was the wild card that I had put in the previous uh, example. So now I'm going to write uh, our try block. So I'm going to put try, on error, E. I'm going to capture the error and then end try. And then in the on error handler, we'll use our display error handler that we just wrote. And we're going to pass in the files of folder. That way we'll know this was the particular handler that had the problem. And then we'll pass on the error message that we might have run into. And lastly, we'll return an empty list from this if we hit an error. So then I'm going to say set input folder to convert path to input folder. And we want to make sure that we have a POSIX path. So I'm going to write POSIX. This is another handler we'll write in just a minute. And then I'm going to say set file paths to text items of do shell script find and this is going to basically run a shell script to run the find command and we're going to give it a flag of dash d and that's going to then tell it which input folder we want to use so the the path that the users or that we sent into this handler and then we'll write a, some more information about how we want this particular find command to be processed including the wildcard for the search option so i'm going to add the search option here and in this case, if we do it with an asterisk, then it becomes a wildcard and it'll find every folder of that particular directory. So this, is, this, hand, this particular statement is really just going to give us a list of all the files from whatever the input folder is that we select or send into this handler. So that's the point of this particular line. I'm using a couple different shell commands here that I'm piping together. So if you want to look into more detail as to what those do, you can look them up. So for example, I'm using find, I'm also using said. You can look those up by doing a man, the word man for manual, space, and then the command name. So in this case, man space sed in your terminal, and it will give you more information about the said command and, and for example, the find command if you do that as well. Next we'll say set file path list to string to list, and that's gonna be another function we're gonna write where we can take a string and turn it into a list and I'm going to supply the file paths, and then I'm going to supply my delimiter of return. All right, so next we've got to do our convert to path or convert path to handler that we used, and that's going to say, allow us to take a, a specific path and convert that to the form of the path that we want. So for example, if I have an alias and I want to convert that to a POSIX path, or if I have an HFS path and I want to convert that to a POSIX path, or if I have a POSIX path and I want an alias, this handler is going to allow us to do that. So I'm going to say, again, start with my try block, try on error e display, or my display error, and then convert file path, because that's the name of this handler, and then whatever the error was. And then I'm going to return false if I had a problem, and then I'm going to end my try statement. 
Next, we'll write the first statement that will be used to convert the path to whatever form we want. So we'll say set standard POSIX path to POSIX path of input path and this, excuse me, as string. And this is going to allow us to kind of standardize the input format no matter what was supplied to this handler and then we can use that to then convert it to whatever format we're looking for. So I'm going to start with my condition. I'm going to say if requested form contains POSIX then, and then I'm kind of building up the structure here, I'll say else if requested form contains alias then, else if requested form contains HFS then, else, and this will be our catch-all end if. So now we've got the ability to convert our path to a POSIX path, an alias, HFS, and a kind of a catch-all. So next we'll say trans set transformed path to POSIX path of standard POSIX path as string. If transformed path ends with a forward slash, then set transformed path to characters one through negative two of transformed path as string. So basically this is going to say um, if we end with a slash we want to remove that slash from the end because POSIX paths don't usually have a slash as the last character when it's a folder. The next one we'll move on to the alias and I'll say set transformed path to POSIX file standard POSIX path as string and then I'm going to put this in its own try block here because when we're when we're trying to set something as an alias, if the file doesn't actually exist, it will return an error message. So I'm going to put this in a separate try block to capture that um, situation where if the file doesn't actually exist. So I'm going to say set transform path to transform path as alias, which would return that as an alias if everything works okay if the file actually exists. If not, then we'll give our custom error message and I'll say error the file and I'm going to use a backslash with a quote to surround the path with quotes. Transformed path is the path we used, ampersand, backslash quote again to give another quote mark, doesn't exist and therefore cannot be returned as an alias. Okay, now we'll move on to the HFS path. So I'll say set transformed path to POSIX file and then I'm going to use standard POSIX path in parentheses as string just to make sure that I'm formatting that as a string before I try to convert it to a POSIX file or a POSIX, um, POSIX file which will ultimately be an HFS path. And then lastly the catch-all error requested path transformation type was an unexpected type. So if for some reason the user calls this handler or we as the developer call this handler with something other than POSIX, HFS, or alias we'll capture that here. And then Lastly, we'll return transformed path to give it back to the call. All right, so our next handlers are going to start dealing with handlers to write against numbers, but it's important to understand the application document hierarchy as we're working with an application. So I wanted to take a minute to break down and illustrate what that hierarchy looks like. All applications have their own hierarchy, so it's important to understand the application you're working with. In this case, we've got an application numbers, which is made up of documents. Those documents, the numbers documents, are named, made up of sheets. Those sheets are made up of tables. Those tables are made up of rows, columns, and cells. So if I want to work with a column, I need to know what table it's a part of, what sheet it's a part of, and what document it's a part of. So now that we've understood that a little bit, let's get into writing some numbers handlers. So the first one I'm going to write is um, launch numbers. And this is really just going to make sure that numbers is an active application and ready to run and that we can interact with it. So I'm going to make a very simple one. I'm going to say on launch numbers and I'm going to add my standard try on error E and try and then we'll use our display error uh, handler that we wrote earlier. And again we're going to use the name of this particular handler which is launch numbers and then we'll go ahead and add the error message. And again this is a pretty simple um, handler so we're just going to go ahead and say tell application numbers and then we'll tell it to activate and then I'll just say end tell and return true so that means if this works successfully we'll get a true result if it fails for some reason and runs into an error we'll get a false result 
Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and set the document to, and we're going to write a new handler, my make numbers document. And so we'll focus on writing the make numbers document. So we'll say on make numbers document, and then I'll give it uh, no arguments. In this case, we don't need an argument. And then we'll end that call and we'll put in our standard try block within the, the handler itself. So I'll say again, try and try. And in this case, we're going to say tell application numbers. And we're going to tell numbers now to make a new document and we're going to capture that. So I'm going to say set the document, my variable, to make new document and then end tell. And now, now that we've created that document and I've captured that document, I want to return that back. So I'm going to say return the document. And then we'll add our on error handler with our E to capture the error. And then we'll use our display error dialog, or excuse me, our display dialog handler. And I'm going to say make numbers document. That's the handler we're using currently with the error message that we got. And I'll return false in this case. Okay, so now we're going to have a, another piece to the hierarchy. We want to get a reference to the sheet that we're using. So we've got the document made, now we want the sheet. And I'm going to specify the first argument as the document, and I'm going to use the second argument as either the name of the sheet or the index of the sheet. So you can see I wrote one on the previous example. Now I'm going to say on get sheet reference, the document, comma, the sheet. So again, the sheet can be the name of the sheet or the index of the sheet. I'm going to write my standard try block, try on error E, and then my display error with the name of this handler get sheet reference, and then the error message, and then I will return false if we run into an error, and then end try. Now we can write the actual numbers hand portion of the script. So I'll say tell application numbers, and then now we've got a reference to the document, so I'm going to say set the reference to sheet, and then the sheet that we supplied of, and this is where the hierarchy comes in, the sheet is a product or a property of the document. So I'm going to say set the reference to sheet, the sheet of the document, and then I'm going to return that reference. So back in our on run handler, now we want to do a get table reference and we're going to use our sheet reference as our starting point and then get the table from that sheet. So in this case, again, just like the table reference, or excuse me, just like the sheet reference, we're going to write a handler to get the table reference. It's going to be very similar in nature. We're going to pass in the sheet reference, and the second argument will be the table that we want to work on. So first I'm going to say try on error and try, and then we'll use our uh, standard display error that we've created. And I'll add the get table reference and the error message, and then we'll return false in this case if we get a problem. And so now I'm going to say tell application numbers, and then we'll, what we want to do from it is we want to set the reference to table, whatever table we're looking for, of the sheet. Now it's important to understand that in this case I don't have to specify the document because I'm sending in a sheet reference which is already part of that document. So we've already we've already clarified that this sheet belongs to some document and we know what document that is. So in this case we only need to worry about the next level down of the sheet itself. This feels like a good place to conclude part one. Thanks for watching and look out for part two coming in the near future.